And Steve, thank you so much for your time tonight. It was an important step forward allowing this convoy in, but I think it's been made very clear it's a drop in the ocean. Did any of that and those supplies come to you and your team? No, those uh, supplies went directly to a UN compound to be distributed mainly to hospitals and to the most mm. urgent beneficiaries and people in need. Um, our organization and literally so many other international aid organizations are waiting for the opportunity to bring our own aid in uh, through the Egyptian crossing. We have trucks being prepared now with medical supplies, food, water, clothing, and other basic necessities for literally hundreds of thousands of children who are waiting in either UN shelters as internally displaced persons or people in their own damaged or wrecked homes waiting for any type of support. Food's running out, water's running out, medication's running out. There's no electricity. There's no clean water. Um, there's sewage in the streets. It's just a complete, absolute breakdown of all infrastructure, and the humanitarian crisis is only getting worse every single day. Do you have any clarity on when you'll be able to bring in your own supplies, as, as you've mentioned? And are you responsible for ensuring that there's nothing else that gets in there? I guess one of the biggest concerns are perhaps would be weaponry for, for Hamas soldiers. Are you responsible for ensuring what's actually in those trucks? No, the Egyptian security, the Israeli security, the United Nations, right. whoever else uh, is responsible and should be responsible to ensure that any aid coming in is strictly humanitarian. Our job is to just procure whatever supplies are needed based on what we know the conditions are on the ground. The whole world knows what the conditions are on the ground and uh, purchase that aid and get it in as quickly as possible. It's not just aid coming in, but let's remember also we have two doctors, American doctors, Dr. Barbara Zinn and Ramona Akamura, who've been stuck in Gaza as well as many other internationals trying to get out uh, since the closure began on October 7th. In addition to that, there's literally hundreds of uh, uh, critically injured children who are in need of medical care they cannot get locally. They need to be transferred out for urgent medical treatment as well. Hundreds of injured children in Gaza right now are waiting for transfer out for medical treatment. Many of them are going to die if they don't get that transfer out. So it's not just aid coming in. It's also the humanitarian opportunity for people to get out of Gaza. Give us a sense of that, Steve. I do want to talk about your people and particularly your international workers that um, that are there at the moment. But just so that my audience yeah. understands, your primary pro purpose before um, the war began was helping very sick children leave Gaza and come to the United States for treatment. Clearly, all that has stopped right now. Just just give us a sense of some of the, the challenges that the children there are facing. Well, the challenges that the children are facing are just to survive. And um, we're talking hundreds of thousands of children just to get food, medication, clean water, which uh, is no longer available for the most part in the Gaza Strip. These are all basic challenges that we take for granted. Our organization before um, this round of fighting began was bringing, it was the main organization in the world, bringing in volunteer medical teams from all over mm -hmm. the world and providing thousands of children in Gaza uh, urgent, life-saving, and life-changing surgical care in local hospitals. We're also the main organization sending injured and sick children out for free medical care, many of them to the United States, and running a, a lot of other important humanitarian programs and projects on the ground in Gaza, and including building the first and only pediatric cancer department in Gaza, which, by the way, now has run out of chemotherapy drugs and no longer the patients in that department are not getting the basic uh, treatment for their diseases, for cancer, that they should be getting. And this is affecting dozens and dozens of children with cancer in the Gaza Strip, as well as, as I mentioned before, literally hundreds and hundreds of injured children waiting for transfer out of Gaza for medical care. Wow. So you have children at this moment that have run out of chemotherapy drugs, and there is literally nothing you can do until those supplies come in. Steve, talk they're to me about... They're not just running out of cancer drugs. Sorry, they're oh, also God, running please. out of food. Uh, we've been having a yeah. hard time getting food to our cancer department in northern Gaza City. It's full of pay of the whole entire hospital is full of refugees who are seeking shelter there, hoping that it doesn't get bombed like the Al Ahly hospital was. Uh, but in that department, in that pediatric hospital, there's a food insecurity. We're having a hard time getting clean water and food to our patients in that department, not only the chemotherapy drugs. Steve, what do you say to reassure the workers that you have there to your point about the hospital bombing and, and the risk that they are perhaps in in this environment? What do you say to them? What do they say to you? I have nothing to say to my staff other than I love them and we're standing with them and we pray for them every single day. There's no words that we can assure them that they will be safe or there is any safe haven in the Gaza Strip. We've seen schools bombed. We've seen hospitals bombed. We've seen churches and mosques bombed. We've seen uh, every type of shelter and residential tower buildings bombed. There is no place in the Gaza Strip that is safe. And there's nothing I can say to our volunteers or to our staff who have small children and families of their own that they're safe. 
all we can do is pray for them and hope that there's a ceasefire and that there will be an end to this madness soon. Some of those people obviously belong there, but as you said earlier, you have international volunteers, doctors yeah. that are there. Um, are any of them deciding to stay or are they all saying, or are you saying to them, look, we have to get you out? They want to come home to their families. Yeah. They were there on a humanitarian mission, supposed to be only one week long. They've been there almost three weeks now uh, because they started the week prior to the um, closure. So they want to come home. Their families miss them. They're trying very hard to get out. We're waiting and trying to coordinate their crossing at the Rafa uh, border. And we hope that that will be coordinated soon. We're asking the American government um, to intervene and push hard for the opening, for enabling not only the internationals to leave, but also, as I mentioned before, others who are in urgent need of life-saving care, particularly injured children, to get out yeah, of Gaza you... and to pr allowing more humanitarian aid to come in. Because what came in today is a minuscule amount of what is actually needed to save the lives of innocent people on the ground. Yeah, you've made that message incredibly clear, sir. Are you confident that the State Department and U.S. officials are doing everything they can to help you both get those people out, but also get aid in? Am I confident? No, I'm not confident. I'm hopeful that they are. I'm hopeful that every person who has any position of power in our country, whether it's a politician or a bureaucrat at the State Department or anybody who has any influence, uh, is making a full effort as a human being to do all they can to ensure the opening of the Rafa crossing and to ensure humanitarian aid gets into Gaza. I'm hopeful, but I'm not confident that's being done because I've not felt that there's been the type of uh, response and communication from our government officials that reflects the level of urgency and a priority that this is being done. Yeah, thank you for your time, sir, because you're certainly helping us make it clear. Um, thank you to you and to all your uh, volunteers and to those um, in Gaza at this moment. Um, your work's appreciated, sir. The president of the Palestine Child Relief Fund. Thank you.